We are now here for the final session of the day on the topic Converting Research into Pattern by Dr. V. Anomaly, Professor and Head, Department of Mechanical Engineering, SSN College of Engineering. I take pleasure in introducing Dr. Anomaly to the online participant. Doctorate from IIT Madras in 1992, Dr. Annamalai has around 15 years of teaching, 3 years of research and 16 years of industrial experience at Carborundum Universal Limited, Chennai. He has 54 journal papers, 20 conference papers and 8 patents to his credit. Dr. Annamalai has received more than 1 crore worth funded projects from DST, AICT, and Ministry of Mines. He has guided 10 masters, 2 PhD scholars, and currently guiding 2 PhD students. He teaches engineering materials, metallurgy, and metrology. He has served as chairman of the Abrasi Sectional Committee of BIS. He offers training to corporates on innovation, creativity, and trust. Metal cutting, abrasive processes, grinding, material science and ceramics are some of his specialization areas. We are indeed delighted to have, have you here for the workshop. I request our professor to deliver the talk. Good morning. This presentation will tell you how to convert research into patent. That is how to migrate from papers to patents. The expected outcome on understanding this presentation, you will be able to appreciate the difference between papers and patents, how to do a patent search, how to evaluate whether your work is patentable or not, and then you can also plan your migration from papers to patents. The planned flow is like this. First, you have to understand the different types of intellectual property rights. Then, as a second part, we'll understand the difference between how a paper is produced, how a patent is produced. The third step would be how to plan our actions for this migration. Then we can look at questions and answers. In IPR, these are the points we'd like to cover. What is IPR? Why an IPR? Types of IPR? How to do a search? How to apply for a patent? What are the ownerships? Etc. Etc. First, Let's understand the property, then we'll migrate to intellectual property. If you have a property, we have to register with a higher authority who will grant you an exclusive right for using and for preventing others from unlawful occupation. In order to get that right, we have to define the boundaries of the property and give details. We have to register it in someone's name as the owner and then on an annual basis keep paying levies and taxes. As long as we use, we also have to keep a watch on whether others are encroaching our space. If misused by others, we can go to court. And also, remember, having got a property, we either sell it at a higher value, or build a house and use it, or rent it out. Which means, a property has to return money, otherwise it's useless. If a property cannot return money, better not to buy. Now, apply the same logic and you'll understand IPR. In intellectual property also, we have to register with a higher authority. That person gives us exclusive right to use and the right to prevent others from unlawful copying. In order to obtain the right, we have to give what are we claiming. That's called as a claim of the invention and give the details of the process. We have to register it in somebody's name as assignee and then on an annual basis keep paying charges. As long as we use, we also have to keep a watch on whether others are copying our idea or not. This is called infringement in IPR. If misused by others, we can go to court. Just like a property, having got a patent, we either sell it at a higher value or manufacture the product and sell or license the idea for others to make and sell. An intellectual property has to return money. Otherwise, it's an expense. If an idea cannot return money, better not to patent it at all. So now you see the match between a property and intellectual property. The only difference is intellectual. So in an ordinary property, we can define the boundaries in the east bound by this, in the west bound by this, etc. But in the intellectual property, you have to give a description of what you are claiming at all. So that makes the difference. Now why should you have a protection? 
Supposing I detect a method of curing a cancer, I may selectively apply on persons who will give me money. And if those people are uh, those people who are not able to get money will not get my benefit. Therefore, the usefulness of what was discovered will not reach the public at all. On the other hand, if I disclose this to everyone, I do not gain anything for having invented or discovered something. Therefore, it's some kind of a compromise. There are two conflicting requirements. There should be a benefit to the society because of the invention. Also, there should be a benefit to the inventor. So, in order to get both of these, we have the IPR protection system. In the protection system, it's an agreement between the government and the individual. The inventor is given a right to make profit by not allowing others to copy the idea. In return, the inventor has to explain what he has actually discovered or invented to the government. So this is a two-way process. I tell you what I have done and you prevent others from copying it for a particular period of time. That's the idea of IPR protection. For example, many a Siddha medicine not reaching the masses is also because this phenomenon is kept secret and not disclosed properly. Now, there are different kinds of intellectual properties one can look at. Some of them are here, a trademark, a copyright, a patent, a trade secret and a geographical indicator. Let's just briefly look at those things. A trademark is something, a word or a name or a symbol or a device which indicates the source of the product, which indicates the quality of the product, is normally given by a superscript called TM or by a superscript called R, that's called as a registered trademark. For example, Kodak is a name. The moment you set the name, you are thinking of the good things you had from the Kodak products. It's a goodwill of the trade. Similarly, the large red M of the McDonald's, the name Coca-Cola, Colgate, etc. The moment it's, these are seen or heard, we are reminded of some good things associated with those products. That's why it's called as a brand recall or a brand value. In copyright, the protection is for anything that is written down both hard copy or soft copy. Any manuscript is copyrighted even without applying for the same, which means if I published a book, I have not applied for a copyright, still the book has got a copyright. It is normally mentioned by a C with a circle. And many of our software programs have the copyright symbol because they are written down programs and are eligible for a copyright. Since making money with a copyright is very difficult, you can look at the kind of protection given if the protection is given for the lifetime of the author plus another 70 years after his death, then only it becomes a public property. Copyright is a right given by the law to creators of literary, dramatic, musical, artistic works, etc. Even though there is no need to apply for a copyright, in such cases where business is involved, people actually apply. So, cine scripts, drama scripts, musical, albums, these are all applied to the copyright office. The third one is called patent. This is a right to the inventor to prevent others from making, using or selling an invention. There are different kinds of patents. One is called as a utility patent which describes how a product or process is made. And there is another one called design patent which covers only how it appears, not about the functionality. There are also patents for plants. We will see more about this in future slides. There is another one called trade secret. Uh, this is something if known to the competitor can affect a business. So I choose not to apply a patent. Then I call it as a trade secret. You don't apply and the government does not give you this authority, but you hold it as a trade secret. This can be protected by your own company in different methods. They got what is called as a non-disclosure agreement and a non-competitive agreement. NDA means anyone who has to visit the campus has to sign it that he will not use it anywhere, whatever he is seeing in your campus. Non-competitive agreement means an employer inside the, <coughs> an employee inside the company has to sign a declaration that even if he resigns from this post, he will never go to a competitive company similar to ours. So these are legally protected by the company itself and there are many interesting cases of trade secrets. For example, Coca-Cola's formula is not patented, it is just held as a trade secret. So the company decides what kind of protection they want. Another one called geographical indicators. This indicates that a product is coming from a particular region, which may be a reason for the quality of the product. For example, a Basmati rice, Darjeeling tea, Tirupati laddu, etc. 
are called geographical indicators mostly they will have the name of the place where the product is available so this is called as a gi <coughs> and gi is not given to individuals it is given only to associations and the associations cannot sell the gi to anyone this is only can be used generally valid for 10 years for example if i take a mobile phone how it works is covered by a patent the shape is covered by the design the name like the way it is written m is called as a trademark and the manual which comes to you is a copyright therefore if you look at it any product it covers all kind of ipr we cannot stop with one alone for example the way we write ssn is a design it is also a trademark somebody else if they start ssn travels then everybody will associate the goodwill of ssn to that and try to give business to them unless we have registered ssn as a trademark we cannot prevent them from using this so this is a rough idea about what kinds of ipr are available and we'll now see a little bit more on patents in order to do a patent we have something called as a patent search this is done to understand what is already available as patents and the terms we use are inventor and assignee an inventor is a person who finds out or discovers or develops a product assignee is somebody else to whom the right of the patent is given an inventor actually does a patent search to understand whether his invention is really new if i am a researcher i'll try to see what are the products going on today how i can map the trend of the products if i am a business person i can look for i got money what are the technologies i can buy what are the technologies i can get license if i am a marketing person i can look at patents to decide with whom i can enter into marketing or outsourcing agreements if you have a technology you look for how it differs from others technology therefore there are a lot of things available in patent search if i don't have a technology i can look for who has the technology so it's just like a literature search patent search is a very very critical thing if you want to enter into the field of patents let's see how it is done there are many uh, websites each government runs its own website i'll just quickly run through that now one of the interesting things is uspto so if the moment we go to united states uh, patent and trademark office the website looks like this there are two parts to it one is on the left called as issued patents and on the other right side is called as the patent applications applications means which have been applied not yet been examined not yet been granted the interesting part is all this data is available fully in the net free of cost so let's see how to go about it let's look at only one aspect quick search i go for patents which are issued and let's look at quick search so this is how i get the uh, open page there are possibilities to enter two terms term 1 and term 2 i can use a boolean word and or nor etc and there is a facility to choose where do you want the word it should be in which field it should be in the title or claim or uh, inventor's name or company etc we'll see it how it looks like for example when i click the all fields there are so many uh, provisions available you can have the word in the title or in the abstract or in the publication date inventor name etc etc so many options are there unless you practice it you will not understand the utility but let's see any one example let's say i have used the word solar in the abstract and use the word energy in the abstract and if i click i get about 1621 uh, hits as you see in the left bottom there is a number and there is a uh, title if i click here i will go to the html document but it is very difficult to see the pictures so what we do is we can copy this number of the patent and then go to another website that's called as pat to pdf so i copy the patent number from the previous search and enter the number here and say fetch the patent i'll get the uh, patent in the pdf form so this is a very easy way to get and download all the available patents which you require to see similarly indian patent system is also interesting search is available it's called as in pass indian patent advanced search system i have only shown a small part of the uh, window a large number of filters are available you can see either a published one or a granted one and you can search in so many forms 
So using this also we can find out what are the uh, patents available in India. Similarly there are other things also which we are not covering here. There is something called as a patent scope which can be offered by World Intellectual Property Organization that also will be able to list all countries. Now let's look at the patent application. What happens and how do you apply? If I am an inventor, first I will have to assess whether it is patentable, then I have to draft the patent and file it in the office. We will see how to do that in further slides. Once I file it, the patent office gives me a priority number. This is very critical. The earlier you get it, the better it is. Then after some time, I would ask for early publication or if I do not ask, it will take its own time for publication, normally 18 months. If I ask for early publication with a special fee, they will publish it immediately. Then I have to go for request for examination. Unless you request for examination, they do not examine at all. Then if there is any opposition, you have to file counter to opposition. This is a rough idea about the process of patenting. After grant, there are also a lot of things to do. We have to keep on paying annual fees. Actually, drafting a patent is extremely difficult or different from what you do in a, a research paper. For example, in a research paper, suppose I want to say two sets of parallel lines perpendicular to each other, it is very easy. I take a surface, two sets of lines I want to draw parallel to each other, that is all. Now I, if I write it in the paper, this is how I would have written it, because I want others to use. I want everybody to use my idea, I am interested in citation index, etc, etc. So research is actually inclusive. You want everybody to use your idea. But when you write a patent, it is exclusive. You do not want anybody to copy your idea. You write it in such a way that nobody can even come near you. For example, let us read it. I rewrite the same two set of parallel lines perpendicular to each in a different form. This is actually from one of my patents. I write it as a number of set of lines, preferably two, parallel space between 1 to 5 mm, meeting at set angles to one another, etc. If I do this, why am I doing this? Suppose I say two sets of parallel lines, then somebody else may uh, write a different pattern with three sets of parallel lines. Then he may be uh, outdoing my idea. Then if I say uh, space between one, if I do not say one to five mm, he may also use it or now he can break it by saying uh, more than five mm, which I know will not work in this case. Like this, we try to make the statement quite complex. I have to exclusively, explicitly say at the same time, I have to ensure that nobody comes near my invention. So this is the first important point. A research publication is inclusive. You are interested in others following, copying your idea and improving your citation index. Whereas in a patent, it is excluding. You do not want anybody to come near you and they do not want, you do not want others to copy your idea also. So this is how it goes. So once you understand patent, drafting a patent itself is a big art. We can talk about it in future. Uh, workshops. And what is the cost involved? Cost is very less if you are an individual. This is how it looks like. Roughly for about uh, 24,000 you can get a quick examination and publication. If you do not want the early publication, it is only 4 plus 10,000. That is all. Drafting charges, if you want to take legal expertise, sometimes it costs 25,000. So like this, uh, anywhere between 25,000 to 60,000 you can keep the patent uh, running. And it has to be renewed annually, remember that also. So if you look at the renewal fees, it goes like this. You can see that as and when time progresses, the renewal fee also increases because the government believes that since you have a patent, you would be actually marketing some product, you are getting some business. So why not share more to the government? That is a logic behind this. So if you look at it, it is cost to us and income to government. Look at the kind of cost because of patents, this is a very uh, four year old uh, cost, four year old data, but look at the kind of revenue that goes to the government because of our patents. The important question as an individual is, if I want to maintain the uh, patent, let us say for 16 years or 20 years, approximately the cost is 1,22,000, filing charges, etc. So average cost of filing and maintaining a patent during its life is actually 1.8 lakhs. Now we have to look at it. Is it worth patenting? Will I be able to get back some money more than this 1.8 lakhs? Then only is actually worth patenting. But unfortunately now, because of NIR of ranking, etc., we are all interested in only filing and getting the numbers. Commercializing it, we are 
none of us are actually aware or even bothered so this is something you have to remember okay let's come back to whether our idea is patentable or not so there are some criteria for patentability three important things one is novelty non obviousness and utility value even if all these three are uh, satisfied each country has got its own list of what cannot be patented that also we should be able to know now what is novelty imagine a mixi delivering the functions of a grindstone ammi uh, in olden days right suppose i had asked somebody to mechanize the ammi they would have only added some robotic arms which will do the same activity but by a totally different activity of rotating knife we are able to produce the same product isn't it so this is called novel the person who was earlier using ammi will never have known that a rotating knife can do the same thing that's what is called as non obviousness so the previous one is called prior art and prior art means the technology that is actually existing now in the area of invention the best example for novelty is by observing nature look at the velcro you can look at the product available on the left side you would have seen such plant a lot of times when you run into the forest it sticks to your uh, body and dress from that somebody invented the velcro so this is an example of innovation similarly the can opener what is shown in the left is what we used when we were all youngsters today we don't have anything like that each can itself has got a small handle which can be opened up so this is totally different and novel and interestingly this is the most uh, money spinning patent ever now the second criteria is non obviousness non obviousness means the people who are well versed in the art must not be able to extend it as a known idea it should be completely novel and non obvious in our case non obvious means when the examiner looks at the patent application a similar one should not be available in anywhere in the literature which means supposing i have developed a product and presented it in a conference and then after 6 months i file a patent what will happen when the examiner tries to search the uh, patent literature or open literature my paper was already available 6 months back that means at the time of filing the application this method is already obvious is to the public so i lose the novelty so this is a very critical thing to know non obviousness means before the patent this should not have been known to anyone else that's a non obviousness for example the patent was once offered for turmeric in wound healing then later indian government backed up by dr a r a marshalkar went and fought it and we were able to uh, prove that turmeric is already known to us and therefore giving a patent for that is not okay and the patent was annulled similarly there was another case where fungicidal uses of neem oil was patented in europe then again by proving that these are all available to us earlier indians knew this nothing new in it though the novelty factor was removed and therefore that patent also was annulled so interestingly if you look at it now it is important to know all the traditional knowledge available so what they did is dr michel created an excellent um, exercise they tried to collect all the available information in literature in all the indian languages then look at where all they have talked about medications those were all converted into botanical terms etc etc so now we have what is called as a traditional knowledge digital library i would strongly urge all of you to visit this site it lists all the available literature where all medications have been mentioned and what are the equivalent botanical names of those products and also the reference to the original document is also available kind of look at it and this is a very important document which has been converted to soft form and given to all the european all the patent offices worldwide if anybody in the world goes for a medical application patent the foreign offices will first scan through tkdl indian provided tkdl only if it is not available there the patent will be offered that way india is a very very strong position in the pharma patent area now the third one is utility value a patent has to be workable must be something useful that is called as a utility value 
actually it is not the number but the utility that matters i am just giving an example where a student of srm university has developed an ultra high density hard drive that can store over 60 times more data <coughs> so this is utility he is able to bring in some improvement in what is happening today so this kind of thing is called as utility so how about ownership of patents there is one difference most of us are employed somewhere if you look at your employment terms they would have mentioned anything that happens during the course of being in employment here the invention belongs to the institution mostly it is like that therefore when we do something inside the college we become the inventor whereas the applicant will be the college and as an inventor i allow the college to take over the right of the patent therefore it is called as assignee i am the inventor the college is the assignee i have given the rights to the uh, college that's called as assignee it is the assignee who gets the right to sell to lease or use the patent but of course we will have our own understanding of supposing the patent makes some money how much will the assignee give to the inventor that will be internally developed by an mou so how do you transfer ownership initially the transfer happens through assignee but once the assignee has got the right to sell he can now transfer the right to anybody who wants to use the patent i can either license it to many people i can say use this idea in uh, tamil nadu alone to somebody i can license it to somebody else for use in andhra etc that is also possible or i can give completely to one person it is called as exclusive licensing uh, or i can do it myself that's called as working the patent in any case the assignee becomes the legal owner of the patent the patent is valid only in that go- this is a very important point to remember supposing i have patented it in india all the protection is only in india if somebody else copies this product and sells in america i cannot do anything about it is it right so therefore in whichever country you want to have a protection in that country you must have a patent otherwise it's very difficult to stop people misusing it there are more things in about it we'll see it later uh, the simple thing is if i am wanting a protection in a particular region i must have a patent in that region that's important it's only geographically controllable and what is infringement if somebody i have a land and somebody comes and encroaches it it's called as encroachment the same thing if i have a patent and somebody misuses it it's called as an infringement okay so infringement can also be controlled i have to keep a watch on who is misusing my idea who is copying my idea that becomes my responsibility once i get that i can go to a court there is an appellate body and they will issue notice to stop usage further and also to pay damages for me so what are the methods there are methods to several methods are available first i can prevent anyone patenting our patent technology how does this happen if you look back in the process of patenting i have said you have to apply and ask for early publication if you don't ask they will publish after 18 months what does that mean there is a journal for patent office and they will publishing they will be publishing that these are the ideas that we are going to consider and patent so now it is our job to continuously look at what is happening in our area if i see something which is not logical i can immediately raise the concern to the patent office so that will be taken as a opposition and it will be passed on to the inventor for a query like this before the patent is granted from the publication i can go and oppose it that is the pre patent or pre grant uh i can stop the patent supposing they already patented then also i can avoid selling products containing our patented knowledge i can go and tell them that this product is infringing my patent therefore you should not sell that is also possible just to give an idea how industries are looking at patents microsoft is a software company you can look at it 14000 patents already granted 18000 patents are already filed and waiting like this every company runs on patents it's a very very important asset which is not easily disclosed outside but they run about it and for example the tata nano has got about 37 patents for the single car how about universities you can have a look at it even universities have got large number of patents and 
in universities there is a lot of universities which make money because of their patent particularly in the biotechnology area there is something called the bedo act which allowed the universities to make money even though the grant is coming from government if the university discovers or invents something the money out of that patent can go to the university itself that change came by a bedo act after that all these foreign universities have been making a lot of money from their discovery so how is the status about indian universities roughly iits run about 200 to 240 patents and anna university has got 53 patents this is a two year old data so like this every with nirf coming up all of us are now eagerly looking at increasing the number of patents but the flip side is how many of us are really making money for example we saw that for every patent i may have to spend about 2 lakhs on an average to maintain the patent for its lifetime imagine iit madras having 234 uh, published patents or 33 granted patents they have to have 33 into 2 lakhs and their income is better than that then it's worthwhile so like this one side getting patents is a problem on the other side making money out of the available granted patents is also another problem so both of this we have to bear in mind now we'll come to the second part how to migrate now we have already known what a patent is how to assess whether my work is patentable or not how to draft a patent how to file and how to support during examination queries now how does it compare with paper publication how will i shift to patents let's look at it now how do we really man, man, uh, make a paper or research paper we start the work with a literature survey then look at what are the gaps in research we develop a hypothesis then by doing the work we do experimental design observation analysis etc then we report the results what do we do we go to uh, conferences or we go to page journals referred journals sjr uh, or thomson reuters we can go to national journals international journal open access etc so many options are available and the assessment is done through peer review somebody else looks at our paper and says okay not okay suppose they reject what do we do we simply change the format and send it to another journal it's as simple as that we don't spend too much time on it after publication we simply look for citation we try to monitor the h index we promote our paper through research gate we send it through uh, social media etc etc and time period roughly between when you are uh, sending your paper to the time it gets published maybe 6 months to 1 year where are clarification sought immediately after sending nobody asks a question after 2 years the moment i file a uh, communication to a journal within one or two months the review starts and what is the validity it is eternal once published it's eternal and type of work whether it is positive or negative both are acceptable i can say such and such things will work also gets published such and such things will not work also gets published so this is the a nature of paper production now what happens in a patent i have to go with a patent mapping just like we did literature search in journals i have to do a patent mapping using available patents from the existing patents i have to find out what is the weakness in the given product then i have to enter into a developing the design in doing the work it normally has has fabrication experimentation product characterization etc then reporting the results i never disclose anywhere i have to only go to a patent office i cannot do anything there is no multiple options i have to only file a patent to the patent office assigned i cannot submit to any other country without passing indian patent office and the earlier i file i get the priority date so these are the reporting results and the assessment is not done by peers but it is done by appointed patent examiners also there would be objections from competitors from the published literature once my patent application is published anybody else can give a opposition to it suppose the patent examiner denies what do you do you have absolutely no option you have to modify your idea or restart the project and go back to point 1 whereas in research if your paper is refused by one journal i simply do a little bit of tinkering and send it back to the next journal it is not possible in patents you have to uh, answer all the queries of the patent examiner or else you have to drop the idea and go back to stage 1 starting the work again this is a difficulty 
then after grant what happens again we have to be careful in earlier case we were promoting our research asking everyone to copy and trying to uh, increase your h index whereas here you have to be doubly sure that nobody is copying you have to monitor infringement what are the time period in paper it was just 6 uh, months to 1 year here it may take anywhere between 1 year to 3 years if there is any clarification sought it comes after 2 years you apply today after 2 years they will ask in query about uh, something wrong in your product how do you answer and if you use students all the more dangerous they have given you something and gone back and after 2 years the query comes as a fact that you may not even remember what happened and what is the validity the validity once a patent is granted it is not eternal but 20 years and what is the type of work only positive results are acceptable there is no point in saying such and such things will not work it is not patentable because it has to have a utility so these are the difficulties particularly in research versus patent uh, research is quick we can communicate to somebody if somebody denies we can go to other channels and it is eternally valid you can ask others to copy we can have your h index increasing which is very very uh, shortcut and quick results for your work whereas in patent you have to wait for 3 years for a result and after 2 or 3 years they'll ask you queries which you may not remember and only positive products are possible to patent because of the utility criteria so these are the major difficulties now if you look at the time lag in patenting roughly uh, it takes about 6 months to 1 year even to publish and minimum 2 to 3 years to get uh, a concrete result now with all these in mind how do we really start i would like to suggest two different ways if you are a fresher then you are free to move to any new area then it's easy what i can do is suppose i decide automobile i can do a patent map on automobile and see what all people are doing there are hundreds of patents on bonnet there maybe there are only 50 patents on seat then i can decide there is something more to do on the seat like this if you are not chosen your area of research and you are open to new areas then you can do a patent mapping locate what is the best available product where less number of patents are available etc etc then start working in that area where the patents are less in number afterwards i will potential area of weakness in the particular product i first chosen areas where there are less number of patents then among those less patents i find out what is the weakness of those patents which are the pain still unresolved then i can improve the experimental design i can check the patentability generate a sample data or a case study to validate my claims afterwards it is generic you write a draft you get it improved by experts or attorneys get the approval by institution apply and retain the experimental documents for later this is very very important after 2 year they going to ask you queries about the experiment it is important you have the experimental documents for later queries so 6 to 10 i am giving in a different color because that is going to be the same for experienced persons also supposing you are experienced person you already have a lot of uh, research papers with you then what do you do you cannot have the luxury of searching a new area so what we do is i can look at all my papers and see is there any opportunity to convert any of these papers into a product because if there is a product there is a possibility of patent simple research doesn't get into a uh, patent once i identify which of my research paper can be converted into a product then i make a designing the product i can do a patentability check to ensure novelty of design if it's already there and something is wrong i can again improve the design to overcome the novelty uh, clause then i fabricate create the product working model i can generate sample data etc etc then 6 to 10 is the same so there are only two things if you are a fresher and you are free to choose an area start with the patent mapping if you are a senior and you already have a lot of papers with you try to analyze the paper which of them can be converted into a product so that will be the guideline what are the points to ponder so we need to know three important facts our idea should be novel it should be doing something that is unique and never done before by researchers in that area it should be non obvious never disclose it by way of talking in conferences or by publication elsewhere before patenting and your idea must be useful must be able to be converted into a product and should be able to be sold somewhere and what is the caution the data for queries has to be available after 2 to 3 years because you 
do your work with your final year students today let's say 2020 you file a patent and your query will come to you somewhere in 2022 or 2023 asking you some queries on your experimental work and that time your student would have left to have given you only a small thesis that may not be able to answer all the queries raised by the examiner therefore it is very very important to maintain a regular work clock what do you mean by work clock every day what experiments i have done what are the results why i chose the other experiment etc etc should come back like a diary that is called as a work clock if this note or a research diary is available with all the observations only then you will be able to successfully define the question by the examiner after 2 years particularly when your students are not available with you and suppose you have made a product and uh, let's say design and fabrication project i have made a model i have published uh, sorry i have converted to a patent application then after the student goes either he takes the model away with him or we also dump it in some corner when the query comes and asks you to uh, demonstrate you may not have the model with you it's dangerous so anything related to the patent you are filing whether it is a diary or a work log or a working model you must keep them safe till such time you hear from the examiner and the real challenge actually comes after getting a patent how to commercialize if you cross all these hurdles and successfully get a patent next step management is going to ask you we have spent so much money on maintaining the patent what are you doing with it so commercializing is going to be a second challenge for us having done all this let's just remember one thing thomas alva edison has about 1093 patents in his name can't we have at least one so all the best for your migration to patents welcome to the world of patents if you want any help in migration in assessing your research work to for patentability etc i'll be very happy to do that and let me say thanks to the organizers of mers for this wonderful opportunity to share thank you